Hi there, it's Hannah the Artisan Duck and I'm back today with this really cute brick stitch tutorial. We have had absolutely gorgeous weather in the UK and when the sun is out I always think of the seaside. So I was inspired to make little fish. Before we start on the beading I'm just going to quickly show the pattern I've made. This is available on my blog as a PDF for you to download. So if you'd like to have the pattern to bead along with me, you're more than welcome to go grab that and we can bead together. But I will be referring to this as I work my way through this video. I've got my size 12 beading needle and some wildfire thread. And I've got a range of Delica beads off to the side. So I'll just bring this one back in. We're working with this silver lined dark blue. I've got a gorgeous orange a white, a black, and then this lighter lined blue here as well. I will put all the names of the beads in the description so you can see exactly what I'm using. Well, I would admit that this light blue, which I'm not sure if the camera's picking up very well, there's a much lighter blue on the end here and on the tip of the uh, fish's tail. That bead came in a sort of a mixed pack of Delica beads that I had, so I'm not exactly sure what the colour name is for that one, which is a shame but I wanted to use what I have. So yeah, I've included that in the tutorial and you'll just have to use whatever you've got in your stash for your fish. So to get started on our beading, we're gonna start right at the top of the fish with these two beads here. And then we're gonna go ahead and add this third bead up the top here before we continue working our way down through the rest of the fish. I have a really good length of threads. This is about um, an arm span. So hold your thread in one hand, stretch your arms open, hold it stretched across to the other hand and then cut that length. So it's a really long length of thread. So I'm going to pick up two beads to begin with and I'm going to take those down my thread towards the end and we're going to leave a really good tail thread as we always do um, because we're going to use this to add our little beaded loop so that we can hang our fish from uh, an earring wire or however you want to use it. And then we're gonna go back up the first bead on that thread and pull through. There we go. So those beads are now sitting side by side. I'm gonna hold that tail thread in my hand, wrap it around my fingers for a minute so it's nice and tight. And I'm just gonna go ahead now and add that bead right at the top. So just go ahead and pick up one of your dark blue beads and I'm just going to reposition this in my hand. We're going to take our needle under the thread that goes across the top of those two beads and push through like so. And then we go back up through that new bead to make it sit flat and pull. There we go, there's our three beads and you can just see here there's a thread on the outside of that bead um, and that just helps secure it in place and you'll always get that when you decrease a row. So we've decreased because we've gone from two beads here up to one. So to secure this bead further in place I'm going to go down sort of on the opposite side so to speak. So you'll have a thread then on the other side like that and that's just making sure that, that standalone bead up there is really secure and now our thread is pointing the right direction for us to continue beading our fish. Before we do that though I want to move my tail thread out of the way because the tail thread is exiting out the same direction as my working thread. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to See if I can do this without um, having to put a needle on the end. Right, so this is my tail thread here and it's exiting out of this blue bead. So I'm going to try and take it up through the next bead along and then we're going to take it up through this top bead as well. You might need to put a needle on for this. Um, my thread is reasonably stiff, but if your thread that you're using is soft, just go ahead and just grab another needle and just move this out of your way. I mean, you could just leave it like that for now and then add a needle on when you come to finish it off. Um, but I'm just going to see if I can move it totally out of my way. There we go. My tail thread is through the top of that bead and 
we are now ready to carry on. So for the sake of argument, I'm going to say we're exiting out of this bead here. I'm going to move on to this row here, which is two white beads and a dark blue bead. And our row is increasing uh, on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and pick two beads to begin with and then add the third bead off to the side. And then the next row is increasing again. So we're going to start our row with a white and the black. This is the pupil for the eye. And then we're going to finish off with a white and a blue. So I've picked up my two white beads and I'm just going to take my needle under the bridging thread that goes between those two beads. There's a couple of threads there, um, which is because, you know, we've done several turns round as we were getting started. So I'm just going to make sure I go under the one thread, just makes it easier to get your needle under. And when you pull that thread, I just wiggle it, those beads will sit side by side. Now to secure in place, we need to take our needle back up through that second white bead that we added, like that, and pull through. There we go, and those white beads should now be sitting flat on top of the blue ones. So I've gone ahead and picked up my dark blue bead, and we've run out of those bridging threads, so we need to find a thread that's going sort of up between the lower bead and the top bead. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's a thread that's going sort of between those two beads there. I'm hoping you can see it. There we go. I show this every time. But I think it's always useful if you don't do brick stitch often, just as a reminder as we get started on the projects. There we go. I'm going to take my needle back up through that bead to secure it in place. There we go. And now we're ready to move on. And um, as I already said, the next row is a dark blue, a white, a black and a white. So I'm going to do that row with you. So what I might do is show you the pattern but move through some of the beading a little bit quicker if it's a more predictable sort of stitch. But there are quite a few little funny turns around the fins and that kind of thing, the tail, where I will make sure to slow it right down and show you in detail how I'm getting there. Um, so don't worry if you think I'm going fast at times because I will slow it down when I absolutely, you know, when there's something really detailed to show you. Because the row is increasing, we're going to go ahead and pick up two beads to begin with. So in this case, it's a dark blue and a white. And we're just going to take our needle under the bridging threads between those two beads and pull through. And then I'm going to go back up through that white bead to secure it in place. like that and now we're going to move on to the black bead so I'm going to take my needle under the bridging thread like that and through and then I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to go back up through that black bead to secure in place the last bead in this row is my white. So I'm going to go ahead and find that thread that's sort of running up between those two beads and push through. And then we're going to go back up through that white bead to secure in place. There we go, that's the first part of our fish. His little eye is added um, and we're ready to move on. We're currently exiting out of this white bead here and our next row we are increasing on both ends again and we start off with a blue, a white, another white and then two more blues. So because we're increasing we're going to go ahead and pick up two beads to begin with. In this case it's going to be a white, um, sorry, a blue and a white and we've got to add that bead on at the side and then we're going to go down and do the next row again. So that next row is six dark blue beads. We are increasing each side. So you begin this row by picking up two blue beads 
and working all the way across until we need to add that bead on at the side. So because I've shown you a few times how we're doing that stitch and you might already be familiar with brick stitch anyway, I'm going to just do little fast forward sections here so you can see what I'm doing but it'll be much faster. There we go, I've finished that first part of the fish head. So, I'm just gonna bring my pattern back in. Right, so we're exiting out of this dark blue bead here and we're ready to move on to these next few rows here where we have the light blue coming in and this lovely orange color as well. So we're still increasing, so you pick up two beads to begin with and you add a bead on at the side. And we're just doing the same stitch now, but the pattern gets a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna pick up a light blue and an orange to begin with. Then we're gonna add four more orange and then a light blue and we'll go on to the next row as well. There we go, there's those two rows finished. So, we are exiting out of this light blue bead on the end here. So we're gonna start the next row by picking up two light blue, and then we're moving on to six orange and finishing off with two light blue. But before we add the orange, we're gonna go ahead and add this singular blue bead up here um, before we continue on, because obviously, um, we don't want to have to go back and do that single bead if we don't have to, so we may as well do it in this um, row here. So I've picked up my two light blue beads to begin my row and I'm just going to add those on in the normal way. So try and get those to sit right and then I'm going to go back up through that bead second bead there to secure in place like that and now I'm in the perfect position to add the bead that sits right on the top there so I'm going to go ahead and just pick up one of my light blue beads and I'm going to take my needle 
under the bridging thread that is going between those top two beads that I've just added there and add this on like so. So pull that thread through and then we are going to go back up through the bead on the top and pull through. There we go, like that. Right, so we're now going to take the needle through this second bead on this row below to secure it firmly in place. So I'm just going to pull my needle through. There we go. And now we've added that little detail onto the tip of that fin and we are working our way back down into the beadwork. So to put us in the right position, we are going to go down through the next uh, light blue bead along, like so. And this shouldn't be tight. It's only, um, we've only gone through these beads once already, so there shouldn't be any difficulty in getting through the beadwork. Right, so from here, we're going to just jump across and we're going to take our needle up into that second bead along. So it's a bit of a cheat this, we're going to sort of just jump across with our thread. Um, if your thread is thin enough, which you know, I really hope it is, it'll just sort of hide between those beads. You're not going to see it. Okay, you can just see that thread has completely vanished. And we need to join our next bead along off this second bead on this row here. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and take my needle up through the second bead in that row, pull through. There we go. And now we're ready to continue our row as normal. Our next bead is an orange one. I'm just going to take my needle as before into the bridging threads or under the bridging threads between those beads pull through and we're going to take it up like that like so and secure in place like that and I'm just going to go ahead now and add the remaining orange beads in this row so it is six beads in total this is my second six orange beads that is so I'm just going to pull that through. And pull to tighten. And I'm going to pick up another one. There you go, there's another orange bead. I'm just going to go through. and back up through the orange bead there's another orange like that okay back up This is our fifth orange in the row. Pull through and back up. And we are adding our last orange bead in this row. Back up to secure. There we go. So we are moving now on to our lighter blue. So I've just picked up one light blue and under those bridging threads. And back up. I'm going to add my last bead to this row, which is a light blue. Okay, 
and just go back up to secure. Right, we finished that row and now we're ready to add the little bead at the top of the fin here, just like we did on the other side. So I've gone ahead and I've picked up one of my light blue beads and I'm going to take the needle up and under that bridging thread. So pretty much like we're starting a new row, really. I'm going to pull and I'm going to go back up that bead to secure. And there we go, that bead is added. So I'm going to take my needle back down into second light blue bead on that row below. This will help make this bead sit neater because it wants to sort of tip off this way at the minute. So it will secure it down and it will also put us in a position to continue with the row. So I should bring my pattern back in so you can see where we're at. We've just added this one here. So we now need to move along and you can see there's a gap on either side of the fin and we need to add these orange alternating with dark blue. So it's three orange alternating with two dark blue beads. Right, so we're obviously facing in the wrong direction for our beadwork, plus we want to miss this thread out here. So I'm simply going to jump across and take my needle up through the orange like that and pull. That thread has disappeared into that beadwork and now we've sort of moved along, we've left that gap in the middle and we're ready to continue beading this way. So I've gone ahead and picked up one orange bead and I'm just going to use that second bridging thread there, so you're just going to completely ignore that one that you can see to the side of it. Pull through and you'll see that this then creates that gap between the tip of the fin and the fish body. Pull through. There we go, like that. And now we're going to add a blue bead. So just a single blue. up and pull. I'm going to go ahead and add another orange. Pull and add that on as before. We're going to add a dark blue bead. Pull through and add that on. Secure it in place. And now we're going to add our last orange bead here. And you'll see that we've left ourselves with a gap on the other side. So the fish's body is now separate from the fin as well on this side. There we go. So I'm going to bring my pattern back in now. So we are exiting out down here. So the next row is simply four dark blue beads and then we're moving on to three orange and two dark blue and finishing up with one orange there. So we are decreasing our rows. So you only need to pick up one bead to begin with and you're just using the bridging threads between the beads on the previous row. No need to add any beads on at the side, literally just pick one up to begin with and finish sort of on that last bridging thread between those two beads. So I'll do this row on camera to show you what I mean because we're decreasing the, the width of the fish's body now. Um, but I'll go ahead and do the other two rows off camera and I, those rows will be orange and blue. So I just, just go ahead. I'm picking up one bead to begin with and adding that one on like that. And just by picking up that one bead, we've instantly gone in, um, it stops that body getting wider. I'm gonna go ahead and this is just like before now. So I've picked up another dark blue bead. 
just going to add that. Pull. And we're going to go back up through the blue. I've got another single blue bead and under those bridging threads. Come back up to secure. And our last bead in this row is just another blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that on. So the next row after this is just three orange beads. And then the row after that is just two blue beads. We're just going to continue with this basic stitch and I shall come back to you when those two rows are done. There we go, those rows are done. So I'm gonna bring my pattern in and show you where we go from here. So we are down here now. We need to add our final bead sort of in the body before we sort of make the tail and it's just one orange. And then we're starting to build back out again. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll do the orange bead with you and we're gonna go ahead and add these two blue beads as well. So I've picked up a single orange bead and we're just going to Take our needle under those bridging threads and pull through. And then we're going to go back up to secure in place. So it's firmly attached on one side, but we do need to stop it from lifting on the other. So I'm going to take my needle down into the blue, just below it, and pull it down. And this will really firmly position that orange bead um, so it doesn't sort of constantly want to tip away from the fish's body. But there, that's done like that. So now we need to move back round again so that we can add the rest of the tail. So I'm just going to cheat again and we're going to cut across and up into the blue bead opposite and pull through. Again, that thread should just disappear. There we go, just pull it tight enough and it'll vanish. And I'm going to go up and into that top orange bead. So I've gone ahead and picked up two blue beads on my needle this time. And I'm just gonna take those down towards that orange thread there. So there's obviously no bridging threads, so we can't secure these beads onto anything. So I'm just going to take my needle up, almost like we did at the beginning. So I'm gonna take it up through that first bead on the needle like that and we're gonna sort of hold that down sort of securely down at the body and I'm just gonna pull through. We need to get those beads sitting side by side just like we did at the beginning like that and just take a minute to sort of tighten that thread to get that tail piece sitting as near to that orange bead as possible. So I'm then going to take my needle. I'm going to go back down through the second bead. So we're exiting out the top here and we're going to take it down through this blue bead. And I'm also going to go down into, let me just wiggle that across. So I'm going to go in there and I'm also, if it'll let me in one go, I'm going to go into that orange bead as well. And we just need to position it. So this looks like it's been attached in the normal way where that, um, the middle of those beads is sitting directly on top of that orange. There you go, just put my needle down and just tighten all that up, make sure it's all sitting nicely. There you go, you can now see that that is sitting just like the other beads below it, so it looks like it's been stacked on top in the same way. But we are now facing in the wrong direction to continue beading, so we have to turn ourselves back round again. So I'm going to take my needle and we're going to go down through the next blue bead, sort of going down, back towards the um, main body of the fish. 
And then we're going to go down and into the middle orange on the row below as well. And push through. And then we're just going to go up into the next orange along and pull tight to make that thread disappear between the beads like so. And now we're ready to move our way back up to the top. So I'm going to go into the blue. Um, just the one blue there for a minute. Needle wants to go where I don't want it to. So I'm just going to pull that through. And these beads might be slightly tighter because obviously we've gone through them a few times now. We're going to go up into this orange bead like that and pull through. And now we're ready to come back into the top, one of those blue beads. There we go. And now we're ready to add the rest of his tail. So we're exiting out of this bead here and we are now increasing our rows for the next sort of three rows, although we've got another little sort of fiddly turn we have to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and add these two rows. So I'm going to pick up two blue beads to begin with and add one blue bead on at the side and then add another two beads for the next row. So pick two beads up to begin with and then add the other two beads as normal. And I shall come back to you when we're ready to do this little section here. There we go, that part of the fishtail is now done and we're ready just to add the final details on. So I'll obviously do this whole section with you. We have got two dark blue, a gap in the middle and another two dark blue. And then I've got these little light blue pieces just to finish off the tip of the tail. So the shape of the tail is still increasing. So I've gone ahead and picked up two blue beads and I'm just going to add those on exactly like uh, before. And I'm just going to go back up through that second bead to secure it in place. And I'm just going to pull and make sure it's all nice and tight. So now I need to add the lighter blue bead on the top. There's no point going off and doing the other two beads there and then coming back. May as well do it all in one movement. So I've gone ahead and picked up my lighter bead and I'm just going to add that on um, like we did before. So I'm going to go under those bridging threads and pull through. And then I'm going to go back up through that light blue bead to secure. Like so. And then partly because we don't want it tipping and partly because I want to move my way back around the beading to start on the side. I'm going to go back down into this dark blue bead on the end there. So now I'm going to continue down. I'm going to take my needle through the next two dark blue beads on that outer edge and pull through. And then we're going to move across to the next blue bead along. Just going to go up there. So we are redirecting the needle and thread towards the other side. Um, what's my tail thread? Pull up, pull it tight so that thread disappears between those beads. And then we're going to take our needle up again onto this sort of blue bead that's second to the end of that row. So just take needle up through there and pull through. There we go. And now we're ready to copy this, but on the other side. So this is increasing off the end of this row. So you're just going to pick up one bead 
uh, to begin with now. So I'm just going to take my needle into those bridging threads and pull. And I'm going to go back up through that blue bead. Pull it tight. Right, then go ahead and pick up another dark blue bead. And we're going to add this onto the side, just like we did every other time we needed to increase the row length. I'm just going to pull that to make sure this thread is nice and tight. So pull. And we're going to go up through that bead again. So that it's sitting nice and securely. There we go. You can see now those two beads are added. So now we just need to do the light blue on the uh, end there. Pick up your light blue bead and we're just going to add that under that bridging thread like that. And pull through. And then we're going to go back up through that bead. So it sits flat like that and then to really secure in place we're going to go down on the other side just to make sure that bead is sort of attached on both sides and not wanting to tip off to one side there we go and there's our tail finished so we've now got to add the loop at the top here and tie our knots i'm just going to take my needle just down a few more beads uh, because I'm going to take the needle off this end and I'm just going to make the loop before I tie my knots. I just don't want you know, to pull it and my um, beading come loose. So I'm just going to sort of go down through the next logical bead along. So I'm just going to go down this bead whip just a little bit. Just move away from where I finished. And I shall come back and tie that thread off in knots in a minute. But for now, we're going to concentrate on this loop. So my needle's now on my tail thread. And I've gone ahead and picked up one of my silver lined beads. And I'm just going to position this on top. But I want it standing up proud. I shall show you what I mean in this one. So I've just altered the position of this bead so I can make... A little loop on it like that. I'm hoping that makes sense. So I've picked my bead up and I'm going to take this down to the end of my fish like that and then I'm going to go back down into this blue bead and that'll sort of tip the bead on its side for me like that and you can just sort of wiggle it to get it um, even tension on both sides so it will sit flat. There we go like that, it's pretty much flat. I'm going to go down into the next blue bead along and obviously we've done this lots now, we know what's coming because I obviously need to turn around to go back up to the top. So I'm going to take that down and I'm going to go back up. Now if you've got really thin jump rings you could just add a jump ring onto this my jump rings are always that little bit too thick for me to feel happy pushing it through that bead. I would hate to break it, so I always make little beaded loops. I'm now going to go back up through that top blue bead and pull. And then I'm going to go back through that silver lined bead like that. And now I need to pick up the rest of my beads. So pick up five more of your silver lined beads. And we're going to go back through that bead that we've just added to our fish, sort of but in the opposite direction. So we create a loop. There we go. And then we're just going to go through these beads again because we want this bit to be as secure as possible. So, so I always go through my loops at least twice. And it kind of helps with the shape as well, um, doing it twice. I'm not sure why it does, but that's sort of how I always feel it works. Right, so I've made that loop. You can play around and get that as neat as possible. Um, but that is now done. And we just need to knot our threads. So I'm going to take my needle back 
down into that blue bead so that I can start tying my knots on the outer row of beading here. So I'm just going to continue working my way down the edge and I'll just show you how I tie my knots and then I shall go off and do all of them um, off camera and then show you the finished earrings that I have made with my little fish. So I'm just going to keep on going down. I don't really want to tie the knots really near to this white or in that white because I'm worried you might see this grey thread showing through if it's bulky. So I'm just going to move away. And I go through the next blue. And now I'm going to start tying some knots. So you need to find a thread that's sort of running between the beads and you're going to cross your needle underneath it. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a thread running between those beads and I've crossed my needle underneath. I'm going to push that through and just make a little loop with my thread. I'm going to take my needle through and pull. And you can do that twice if you want. And then I'm just going to go through the next bead along. And I'm going to do that sort of knotting process a few times because I do want my beadwork to be secure. When you pull into the next bead along, that knot sort of just gets hidden in amongst all the beadwork. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to tie the knots on both my tail thread and then this longer working thread and come back when I have finished it. There we go. There's my finished earrings. So I've just gone through my bead stash and found a few bits and pieces that I like the look of them. But there's my finished earrings. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I absolutely adore these little fish. Uh, these earrings are mine. I will be wearing them all summer long to remind me of the seaside. But I shall put all the links below for the pattern and names of the beads and all that good stuff. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.